I feel like this question here um, actually is relevant to a lot of people. So that's why I'm doing it in a live stream instead of answering to this one individual. And I'm going to read out the question that this individual has sent to me. And it's pretty sad and I'm sure you will relate to it. If you're a vegan, if you sort of aware what's go of what's going on and it can be a very dark realization. So it says, hi Joey, I understand if you don't reply to my message due to the fact you'll probably receive so many a day, that's true, but I did flick through and seen this, but I'm feeling really down right now. I'm a vegan since January and I love it. However, I wanted to know what you do or what other people do in cases when they are watching a really upsetting video on animal cruelty. You feel so sad and emotional, you just cry. My heart literally hurts. I don't know what to do with my feelings because I try to be positive, but all of these awful things are happening. Now I can't stop it. And all I want to do is help all the animals I see suffering. I just want to love and reassure them, but I feel so hopeless. Who can relate to that? Yeah, I, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. It's a horrible feeling to live in a world where you see trucks full of animals going into the slaughterhouse and you can't do anything to stop it or you get put in prison because it's actually legal to torture and kill animals and it's illegal to stop the torture and killing. And people who are against the torture and killing are criticised and mocked and ridiculed and, you know, there's laws put on us and all of these things. It's a, you know, that feeling of helplessness, of, of feeling hopeless, it's not an empowering feeling. It takes the, the spark from your heart. Um, it can leave you feeling immobile, like you can't act, you know, frozen, depressed, sad, suicidal even. But... The way I deal with it, because being from the past that I was, uh, I come from, was I only had a few ways of reacting to certain things. Um, if I saw something that I couldn't control and I had no way of stopping it, I'd get angry, aggressive, controlling, sad, I'd uh, use drugs, try to escape. There were many different ways I dealt with these emotions. But it was only later on when I got sober and I renounced all of that, those toxic ways of reacting to emotions was that I started to find a new way to react and respond to this. And it was taking those feelings of anger, rage, you know, hopelessness, sadness, getting them all in a little ball and channeling them. So being very conscious about how you channel them conscious about how you channel them into uh, some form of advocacy that helps create a dent in this oppressive, evil, torturous, murderous system that enslaves and kills billions of animals. So you get these feelings of hopelessness and you turn them into anger first. Because I'm going to tell you right now, anger is a more useful emotion than hopelessness, okay? But anger can be a bit sketchy too, because anger can turn easily into aggression, and I don't think that's helpful. I think that that can be just as detrimental as hopelessness. But angry people act. Hopeless people sit around and be sad, okay? So that's why I prefer anger. If it makes you angry seeing what happens to animals, turn that anger into action. It's motivational. You don't really care what, what people think when you're angry and you know what you're doing is right. You will take the criticism. You don't care. You've seen animals be gas chambered. You have perspective. You know, it's making you sad. You don't care if people um, ridicule, get angry, aggressive with you because you know you're standing for what's right, for what's just. So, although it is hard, and although I've got a different personality to a lot of people, some people are a lot more sensitive than I am, so a lot of people haven't had a past of violence and seen a lot of things, but still, I, I get sad and upset, and I cry, and tears in my eyes, and um, I feel 
sometimes I feel a bit defeated or a bit like, you know, self-critical and am I doing enough and oh my God, look at this, am I ever going to stop it? But I actually don't ever generally feel hopeless um, because I'm very conscious of how my thoughts and my feelings create my reality. And collectively, all of our thoughts and feelings create reality. Now, do I want to put out the energy of there is no hope? Or do I want to put out the energy of we can stop this? We can do something. You know, a vegan world is possible and not even only possible, it's inevitable. Put out that consciousness. Think of what impact one person, me, just, just me, and I don't have that big a following, I made a pretty big impact coming from drugs and gangs and, you know, addiction. And, you know, I've made a decent impact. I've got them thinking anyway. I've definitely got the mainstream thinking. That's one person. But that came from an intention and a belief that I can make a difference. And I used to say to myself, you know, you can, you can change the world. And that's not to say that, you know, anyone can do that. Anyone can. Like, it's just how you channel your emotions and what you believe is possible. So I'm not saying I'm someone special, because I'm not. I'm not anyone special. I just believe that I can make a difference. And I don't let anything stop me, because I'm dedicated. I'm dedicated and I have perspective every single day. And, I, and, I, and if you're in it for the right reasons, you'll stay in it for the long haul. You'll stay in it for the long haul. So I want anyone who's feeling hopeless and depressed and sad at what's happening to animals is to take those emotions and put them into actions. Because tell I'll tell you right now, the animals don't need a bunch of sad, hopeless individuals. They need some angry activists ready to do what it takes to get the job done to rescue them, to save them, to stop the, the system that continuously breeds them and kills them. So that's my thoughts on that. It's all about perspective and how you channel your emotions. I'm not going to say this, that witnessing this stuff isn't going to cause some mental problems. I mean, it's, it's horrific. It's horrible. When you wake up in this reality, it's like a nightmare. You've woken up and you're like, oh my God, like, what are we doing? This is the most psychotic mass murder ever and people are defending it on mass so it is quite a it's quite a shocking realization to have um and when you find out so many people are apathetic or don't care it's crazy it's like we're in topsy-turvy land everything's back to front but also remember you're not alone you're not the only one who feels like that we all do all of us activists feel the same way you know we're all we're all trying our best we all get down it's a, a struggle, it's not easy, but we're in this together. And you, we're in it for the right reasons. And no matter how hard you're doing it, no matter how hard, there's always an animal somewhere doing it a lot worse. Think of it like that. Think of it like that. Humans, are, even if a human is doing it hard, you know, generally in the Western world, you can get help. You might have family, even if you don't have family, there are services to help you. You know, doctors and you know, psychologists and ambulances. And, but animals are systematically tortured and oppressed and murdered and eaten. There's no one protecting them. Their protectors murder them. They're born into oppression. They're born into cages. They're stolen from their mother. Think about that. They're thrown into gas chambers. People laugh at you when you start talking about it. Bacon, bacon, you know. They're not even viewed as individuals in this society across the world. And that's not just here, that's everywhere. That's everywhere you go. They're being hacked up into pieces. In Asia, they're being stabbed in the throat, you know, drowned and hacked up into pieces. In Russia, in China, in Australia, you name the country, they're all being hacked up. They have no chance. So we are very privileged. Human beings are very privileged. Um, some, some less than others. Some less than others, but if you're in a position where you, you know, we're living pretty well here in the UK, and there's, you know, we we should never take that for granted, and be grateful for what we have, and use our blessings, you know, use our freedom that we have to try to gain the freedom for those who aren't so lucky, who are born a different species. So I want you to f think like that. I want you to feel motivated, and you know, you're still here. You know, you've got a chance here. You can really do something to help make an impact on the planet and help 
stop this absolute horror story from happening. And don't matter about how big it is, but just have an intention in your heart every single day. Like I spoke about when, when I first got sober and I used to go to sleep and I'd wake up and I'd be like, my death is imminent. You know, I'm not going to be here much longer. I've spent all this time, wait, I've wasted all this time. I've caused so much pain and suffering and hardship to people. What am I going to do? Am, do I want to leave that legacy behind? What do, I, what do I want to leave behind on earth after causing so much drama and crap and being such a mess for so long? What do I want to leave behind? Who do I want to help? Who do I want to help? I could sit here and feel sorry for myself. Oh, you know, I was, you know, I was an ex-junkie and I've done all these things wrong and I feel so sh- ashamed of the things I've done in my past and I've hurt people and... You know, I could have sat there and felt sorry for myself and wallowed in the bottle of whiskey. But I was like, you know, I'm going to use this second chance to give back. And I can, and you can. We've all got phones. These little iPhones here, they're so powerful. So powerful, you can change lives. You can save lives with them. It's just everyone's got their part to play. And whatever your strengths and attributes are and whatever you can bring to the movement, bring them. Bring them hard. Go hard. Go hard, don't care, don't worry about what people think. People are gonna think what they think, no matter what you do. You might as well follow your heart. Okay. So I thought I'd just discuss that and hopefully leave this for the individual who messaged me this message. And we've all gone through that at some stage if you've realized the magnitude of the Holocaust. I mean it's horrific and you've probably all seen something that really has stayed with you. And you know, I've met many animals and watched them go into the slaughterhouse and you know, I see people eating their hacked up body parts all the time and it's distressing and, you know, I just channel it all. I go and be creative. I go out into the streets and bring a camera out there. I go out, you know, stop a truck. I go out to the slaughterhouse and talk about it. I, you know, go to the sanctuary, film some videos with the animals, get your friends to connect. There's so many different ways to, to help make a dent in this industry and it's not one person, it's all of us to collectively together. You know, and if you're in the UK... Come to the march. Come to the march. The march on the 17th. You'll, you'll, you'll leave there feeling motivated. It will light a fire in you that you can't put out. Okay? Anyways, um, we'll leave that there. I love you all. I hope um, that gave you some perspective and inspiration and, you know, help you see things the way I do. I know we're all different, we're all so different. Some of us are really sensitive to what goes on and I understand that. Um, I've got a very good way of shutting things out and focusing, but that's because I've suffered trauma in the past and I've got good good barriers that that sort of protect me a lot. Like, But please channel those emotions. It's one of the most productive things you can do on earth. If you see something that makes you angry, Go after it, take it down. Alright, peace.